All right, so with that, we'll move on to the actual, doing the actual keyword research and some tools that we can use for that. Uh, some of the easy ones to go with that uh, we commonly use are like Ahrefs. So like that's this tool here. So for example, a way to do that, like you can just punch in a, a domain. I'll use one of our clients here. Just punch them in here. And then within the results, so they have organic keywords 2.0 and organic keywords. They eventually they'll roll these into one. You can, for our purposes, just doing search, just doing keyword research. You can just pick whichever one you want. Um, and then what it's going to do, if you, whenever you punch a site here and go to organic keywords, it's going to pull up a list of all the search terms that this site ranks for, and it'll also give you the search volume. And then from there, and then you can, you, you know, I, I would recommend organizing it by uh, by the search volume. And then you can kind of go go through it and you can kind of pick out you know which ones are relevant to your practice area and which ones have a good search intent that you're that you want to pursue and you can just, you can just go through the list and mine for keywords that way you can do that through our, for our from our sites to find out terms we're already ranking for that maybe we're ranking lower for and if we had a dedicated page for we could jump to the page one you know so it's an easy way to find terms that we're accidentally ranking for that are worth pursuing and you could also punch in key uh competitor sites into here and do the same thing and to find out uh, what they're ranking for that you're not ranking for. Now, when you want to do that with the competitor sites, I would actually recommend using SEMrush because uh, you can do the same thing where you where you pop in a uh, you know a site. So, like we'll do one of our clients here. All right, so Lewis here is ranking for four and five keywords currently. So you can just go there, you can find out what the keywords he's ranking for are. So much is going a little slow today. And then again, I recommend searching it by uh, organizing by volume. Then you can just go through and find the ones that are relevant for you and that uh, have a good intent. And then if you want to then to do a comparison with a competitor, uh, Summer has a tool that's called the keyword gap. And for example, one of Lewis's competitors in his market is uh, craftlaw.com. And as you can see here, the keyword overlap. So this is Lewis, this site's only about a year and a half old. So naturally we're gonna have fewer keywords so far, uh, but it's already doing pretty well as far as criminal defense goes. And so this is, this is craftlaw.com. So they've been around for quite a while and they've amassed a large volume of keywords that they rank for. And the Venn diagram here, we have 159 keywords that we have in common that we're ranking for. And then Craft Law is ranking for like, you know, 4.5K keywords more than what Lewis is ranking for. While Lewis has about 500 or so keywords that he's ranking for that Craft's not ranking for. And then you can go down to the list here. And right now by default, it'll show you the shared keywords that they have in common and like where they rank for them. And then you can also go to missing and this will show you the ones that uh, you know one side or the other is not ranking for. So these are key, like right now it's showing me in the green column here, it's showing me the ones that Kraft is ranking for that Lewis is not. Now we just started optimizing Lewis for personal injury terms. So you see here that Kraft has apparently been targeting personal injury terms for quite a while because he's already ranking for some of those, whereas Lewis has a long ways to go on there. But you know, you can go through the list here and again, find the ones that are relevant for the practice area you're looking for and that also have good search intent that you that you think would bring ROI to the client. Um, so that's, a, that's an excellent way to kind of mine for keywords on other sites that are big sites that rank well that you see all the time in the SERPs. You can go in there and find out what they're targeting, what they're actually ranking for that your site isn't even on the map for. So that's a great way to go out there and find new keywords. A um, couple other methods, you can go into Google Search Console. I got Lewis pulled up here. Uh, and you go into queries and here you'll find search terms that are actually bringing traffic to the site. So these are ones that he's probably gonna be ranking for. And, you, and here you can kind of find out, you know, you can kind of confirm what you think the user intent is basically. Uh, so if you if you see that he's ranking well for a couple of terms in here and they, then they're, they're routinely up in there, those are probably terms that we might wanna hone in on a bit more or mine for our other clients that are in that practice area to make sure that they're also getting traffic for those terms. So that's a good way to go and find keywords as well. You can do something similar in Google uh, uh, AdWords uh, Keyword Planner. 
uh, if you get into there, you can you can you can you can also mine mine in there, and Google will tell you like the expected search volume in there as well if you set up a, if you set up an AdWords account. Um, and then another way that I like to go looking for like long tail phrases is actually I just go to Google, and like here I did a search for do I need an attorney for a car accident, and if you scroll down here, you'll eventually find is it'll say like people also ask, so it'll give you good long tail phrases that other people are actually searching that you may not have thought to pop in there. Um, and then you, and you, you, and you can follow this rabbit hole for as long as you want. Like, you know, I can go into here and uh, is it worth getting a lawyer for a minor car accident? I can go and I can tell Google, yeah, go ahead and search for that one. And you, you and you can find the people also asking there and just keep going down that rabbit hole until you get to the, you know, get to the, wherever you want to establish the end of it. So that's a great way to go mining for long tail keywords. Just always keep in mind the search intent, you know, in purely informational keywords, yeah, you might want them, you might not. And some of that we will touch on next week when we get into entity SEO, because some of those may be part of the entity, but we'll leave that for next week. Uh, but whenever you're doing long tail keywords, it's always good to kind of keep in mind the search intent and whether those actually ROI enough that, to, that makes it worthwhile pursuing those keywords. Uh, but that's a great way to go find long tail keywords that you wouldn't, that you're not necessarily sure of how users would search for them, is you can pop a search into Google and find out what people are actually searching for the people also ask tool. And then there are there are other tools you can use too that are out there. Like just for example, there's a there's a really kind of basic tool called Keyword Shitter. Get what the actual URL is. Yeah, keywordshitter.com. And this one is like super basic. You can just pop whatever you want in there. Like uh, let's do the same thing. Do I need a lawyer for a car accident? And it'll just keep going through here and popping out new keywords for you. So you can go, you can also find them that way. There are a million different tools you can use to find keywords. It's, uh, there's no shortage of them. And there are a lot of free ones out there. Like this is a totally free one. As you can see, it is not the most attractive of, of, of tools uh, visually, but it does work. So and as, as you can see it, it's still going. And eventually it starts going into these like really tangential ones because what it's doing, it's, it's following the rabbit hole of the search results as well. So at a certain point, it's worthwhile just stopping the job and then going back up to the top and just kind of like following it until you get to the, where it starts getting kind of tangential. So that's a good way to go get them too. So, all right. All right, so that's what I've got for keywords and keyword research. Like, again, the main point is we want keywords that have search volume and we want keywords that have user uh, search intent of to purchase or to hire. And then like, you know, you can find keywords in any number of ways. There are a lot of tricks to it. Uh, I'd be, you know, open the floor now for any questions or any techniques that you guys like to use. Willie, I had a question. Yeah. Um, if like, like you did there, you went to the Google snippet and you pulled, um, some like long tail ideas from there. Now, how do you evaluate those? Like if you get a good long tail phrase from the, the Google snippet, but it ne doesn't necessarily have like a lot of search volume. Like if you plug it back in the SEM rush, like, is that. What do, you, what, do you mean by, what do you mean by a lot of search value? You mean like search volume or what? Like if you take like one of those phrases, like do I need to hire a car accident lawyer if it's like a long phrase and you plug that back into SEM and it doesn't show you there's a high monthly search volume for that, is that still one that you feel comfortable going with because you, you pulled it from the snippet or? it's that, There you get kind of in the matrix of like, is the search intent really good? Like do I think it has a really strong potential for like they want to hire a lawyer? Um, or I could squint it to being to, the, to make to making them understand they want to hire a lawyer. Then even like a low search monthly search volume might make that worthwhile. Um, if it seems more in the informational area, then it might be one they make, make a pass at. Uh, and it might also, and it might also too get down to the point where it's kind of like how long are we working on the site? How far have we fleshed out the content? Are we getting to the point where we're kind of scraping the barrel? You know. So there's that as well. Like if you have more valuable stuff that you haven't hit yet, it probably makes sense to like back burner that one and go, go to the more juicy stuff first. So if you do end up at a place with a client who you're scraping the bar barrel for, then what? Should you still be really trying to, I mean, obviously we wanted to find pages with good search intent, but what if there isn't, then what? What if we've done everything? If, you, if you've literally done everything and like that might be the, that might actually be the case for certain sites. Like, like 40 you know, months in. <laughs> yeah, like 40 months in, that's totally possible. And at that point, you know, if we're just bloating the site at that point, then it might make worth be worthwhile having a conversation with the client to be like, look, the site's looking pretty good. Uh, you know, it's pretty well stocked on content. 
there's not much left for us to put up there that's going to have worthwhile ROI, then we, we then we could probably just redirect the entire budget into backlinks and other stuff. You know, we're probably still going to want to publish the occasional blog post just so the site's content doesn't get stale. Uh, so like, but, but we could probably make, take it down to as much of a minimum as possible because you do want to avoid bloating the site out. I've been like going back through and like re like redoing or updating old like target keyword pages for some of these clients because I'm that, like that's that be, more beneficial to them than creating this yeah. useless page. Yeah, and going back in and, and refreshing the optimization for struggling pages could be a better use of the content budget than just creating new pages too. You know, because SEO changes over time, but Google values changes over time. So going back and getting the optimization up to like current standards, that's probably a better use of the time and budget than scraping the barrel for a search phrase that has, you know, 10 searches per month and very low intent to hire. Yeah, I'd say if you're, if you feel like you're wasting your time, let me know. And uh, yeah, we'll try and work out something with the client and, and yeah, use that money better, use their budget better. But yeah, we can always direct the content budget into offsite stuff, you know, directories, guest posts, whatever. I've got a question for you. Is there any good way to forecast uh, potential um, keywords that could be really strong other than just like taking the client's advice? What do you mean um, by forecast? Do you mean like just thicking them up or what? So what comes to mind is like Walper and the GPB stuff that he wanted to go after once that case was finally, or once they finally opened up the, you know. So like stuff that's stuff that's like more event related and kind of like flash in the pan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, aside from the input from the client, are there any tools or is there any, any way to, I don't know, to analyze that and see what, what, I mean, I think that kind of, I think that kind of comes down to being plugged into current events. Right. Well, what about trends? Yeah. I think it means like, if you see a keyword that's not ranking well right now, so you're like, okay, we're not going to do this one now. We'll table it. And then you pay attention to the trends and where it's going. If you start to see the trends go up, even though the search volume is still low, then you might want to start to keep your eye on it. I think that's what you mean, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. And you can see that trend in SEMrush. Yeah. When you log in, it's one of the like options. It's okay. It, yeah. It's right next to like the search volume, I think. Okay, cool. Anyone else? One last question that I have, Willie. Um, I've seen a lot of people write about like the importance of entities in SEO recently. Um, what is the difference between like an entity and a keyword? I've, I've seen I'm a lot gonna of people write about that this. one for next week because next week we're doing entity SEO. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. It and seems entities, like it's like the hot entities, get, entities get complicated. So okay. it's, it's like, when you when you get your brain wrapped around it, it's actually pretty intuitive, but it's it does it is hard to like uh, explain it first. Okay, yeah, everyone keeps writing about that. Everything I see, like is, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the new thing that's all the rage. So, but yeah, there there are certain tools we can use for that as well uh, to kind of figure out like what the entity is. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll be covering entity SEO as the topic for the next day you call because keywords keyword uh, kind of like naturally goes into the entities because like you know keywords will make up an entity but we'll, we'll cover that next week